Hello viewers, I am Will Keith, and today I'm going to be showing you some very basic strikes with a katana. I'm doing this because I have a lot of people who ask me to recommend swords for them who've never used one before. So they're just going to be cutting bottles in the backyard pretty much just like I do. So I'm just going to give some very basics. I mean, I'm not going to pretend to be any kind of sword master or anything. Quite obviously I'm not. But I'm going to show the techniques that I use to easily cut through water bottles safely. So I'm going to set this down here. Let's start with how to properly grip a katana. I'm going to move in closely. But first let's start with what you don't want to do. Do not just grasp it like you're holding a friggin' baseball bat like this. Don't do that. What you want to do is a bit below where the sube is there. Suba or suka? This is suba with a B, I think, yeah. Grip it with these three fingers. That's where the strength comes from. This finger you want it to hang loose. So uh, when you're redirecting the sword, that's not like all crimped in there. And then this hand is mostly used for redirecting. If you're left-handed, other way around, however you go, main hand goes on top, off hand on the bottom like so. Do not grasp with this hand, this is just for redirecting the blade. So this is the kind of grip you want. Not all the way up here, don't do that. Down here, or even a little bit further down. Whatever feels more comfortable for you. Now, basic strike would be, what you want to do is you want your feet apart in a fighting stance like so. Then, hold it like this. One thing I see uh, people do when they don't really know how to handle a sword is they bring it back in the exact direction they're going to cut in, or the opposite direction that they're going to cut in, and then just swing it across again like a baseball bat. You don't want to do that. A katana, it's not for chopping, it's for slashing, smooth, fluid motions. So, instead of just bringing it back like this and swinging for the fences, you want to kind of do it fluidly like so. Up, around, out, up, that way, and so on. Fluid motions. So, if you're cutting straight up, there's nowhere else to really go for it. So, just bring it up and then straight down into your target. But any kind of horizontal moves, you want to keep them fluid. So, when I'm cutting bottles, uh, the strike that I use the most, most reliable, is bring it up and then down kind of horizontally and diagonally like so as I said you want it to be fluid make sure you keep the blade very very straight you might want to make sure you're not hitting on the side or anything if you're striking a really heavy bottle like a five gallon jug if you uh, hit it with the side you could actually end up damaging the blade so make sure you're hitting with the absolute edge on I'd recommend starting with the thin uh, milk jugs first because then even if you smack it side on like this, it's not going to do anything to the sword. And it works the other way too, up and down from the left. And if you want to cut straight horizontally, you can do that too. Uh, instead of just bringing the sword back like this though, what you want to do is keep it close to your arm like this. Bring it back and then horizontally like that and so on. Uh, when you're cutting bottles, there's not really any reason to do um, upwards diagonal strikes, but those strikes still would have been useful historically because if you're fighting somebody who's wearing armor, the weak points are under the arm. So you want to wait, you want to deflect their strike, and then go straight down under the armpit, try to get at the skin there in the joints. But in the modern day, that is quite obviously irrelevant. So, what you want to do is you want a boken. That's a wooden sword, or a uh, shinai, that's a bamboo sword. And those are really good to practice with. I'm using a sharp katana here, just for uh, demonstration purposes. But if you've never handled katana before, you definitely want a wooden sword. Bamboo, hardwood, doesn't matter. You can even go out in the friggin' forest or backyard, get a stick, you know? As long as it's about uh, 30 inches long. That's going to treat you right, just make sure you have a good handle. But um, definitely do not practice with a sharp blade. Take a bunch of practice swings. Uh, you probably shouldn't be actually wielding a sharp katana until you have probably at least a week of practice with uh, basic swings with a blunt blade or a wooden one. So I guess that's about all I had to say. Focus on your grip. This is very, very important. Make sure you... Or it locked in there, or else if you try to swing, 
and your hand is locked, the blade's gonna keep going. I mean, these things are very light, but they're not light enough where you might not lose your grip on it if you're not handling it properly. Oh yeah, the uh, sheath thing, let me show you that. This is another important thing. When you uh, unsheath your sword, let me turn this way so you can see what you're doing. It might look more natural for the katana to be held like this with the curve going up, but that's not how it goes because when you're drawing that, there's only one way for the blade to go that's very predictable, although as it keeps saying against bottles, it doesn't matter. How you wanna hold it is like this with the curve face, with the uh, back of the curve face in the ground. And from here, you can draw out like this, cut down, or all you gotta do is bend your wrist and you can go up that way. It's much less predictable. And now the uh, proper way to resheath with the sword, I'm just doing it quickly here, but after you draw it, when you put it back, you don't even have to look at it. Put your hand like up above the thing and now the back of your sword, holding like this facing forward, back of the sword, push against the back of your hand, draw it along there until you feel it click into the thing, and then right back in. And then once you get good at that, you don't even have to look at it. You can just cut shibori and then right into the sheath. So practice with that. Um, lots of people ask me if I've ever been injured while I'm practicing the katanas. And the truth is, it's only happened one time, and it was when I was practicing resheathing the serve. You gotta be very, very careful with that. Sadly, this is something you can't really practice with a bokan. Uh, I'd say maybe get an Ido katana, which is the blunt one used for uh, practicing with techniques involving drawing and resheathing. But those are expensive, and you don't really have to worry about that as long as you are ridiculously careful. See, what happened to me is when I was resheathing, I forgot to move my hand out of the way and it got me right there on the thumb as it was going back in there. So you really got to be careful with that. When you put him back in, I, once you get good at it like I am, you don't have to look at it. But I would highly recommend when you practice and look at it, when the blade's going in, unwrap the back of your hand and let it click in like that. I don't know if the cameraman got it at a good angle. Make sure you're washing my hand. As the blade's going in, get your thumb way off of there and let it click in like that. And then you can... Put it back in your belt or if it's already in your belt just leave it there like that so as everyone should know katana any sword anything with an edge is an extremely dangerous weapon they're not to be fucked around with so be very careful with how you're practicing with it especially when you're sheathing it it's all close to your hand that's where the main accidents can happen when you're just swinging it as long as you got a grip nothing bad's probably going to happen Make sure you got a good grip. Make sure your hand's out of the way when you're drawing it and resheathing it. And that's about it. So thanks for watching and have a good day. See you next time.